We've got people from all over the world. And today we're going to talk about an important question. Let me turn off that little ticker. Um, and that is, can you understand your DNA without doing genealogical research? That is our topic of the day. So um, just so you know, you can type in your thoughts anytime throughout the show and we'll probably highlight it on the screen. If you have any questions that are off this topic, we'll tackle those in a little bit. But I really wanted to tackle this question here. And before we start sharing our thoughts, I did think it was interesting over on our community tab. Go to our community tab. Come on, add your stream. There we go. We did have people respond to our poll, and it looks like um, no, and sometimes are kind of in. Well, no is obviously winning, according to the people that participated. 161 votes. 81. 81. Sorry. <laughs> and then um, there's a fair amount of sometimes and yes. So we do a lot of it depends on this channel when we answer, ask uh, questions. And I can definitely see some it depends. So before, I wanted to tell you a little the the reason why this question came up a lot. And then we're going to start having the discussion. <laughs> and Andy's Shop gonna with an R. <laughs> Shop doesn't have an R, John. Shrope. See, you said there's a Shrope. This one, you don't say. Shopshire, maybe? Are you saying it's Shop without the R? Shop. <laughs> Andy's going to practice. <laughs> Shop. Everybody in the UK, you guys can't speak English very well. <laughs> Or American. So 6 p.m. in the evening, 17.05. That would be 5.05. Uh, 17.05. Oh, not Shropshire. Oh, okay. Not Shropshire. Shropshire. Thanks, Greg. Okay. I think I'm getting it now. Shop <laughs> plus an R. Shop plus an R. <laughs> That's an odd way of saying it, but okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, I read a lot of comments on our YouTube channel, and a lot of them are related to DNA. And the, as the one who's the Debbie Downer of DNA, who really loves record research and writing family history, I started to notice a trend. I was and just making sure we weren't on fire back there. Oh, thank Sorry. you. I'm glad. <laughs> um, I noticed a trend. I, I noticed a lot of people saying, I don't care about my family tree. I just want to understand my DNA. And I had a hard time responding because I really wanted to drop some sarcasm and I wanted to be really mean. And as many of you know, I really don't like to be mean. I don't like to get into play more. So um, I was having some trouble. And so I thought, all right, why don't we bring this Unless to- Unless it's about Finland. No, I'm not. I'm going to say it out of that fight, too. <laughs> that, you know, is Finland part of Scandinavia? That one keeps battling. And I just thank people for their contributions because I'm staying, I'm staying neutral. <laughs> um, anyway, so I thought it would be fun to have a, a discussion with you guys. So I've gone to several places. But first, Andy, what do you say? So the question is, and I'll, it's kind of a rolling one. I don't really have a slide today because I was being kind of chill like that. Can you understand your DNA without genealogy research? Depends on what you want to understand. That seems to be the common thread in the responses. <laughs> so let's go through that. So oh, I thought you were going to like throw up some responses. No, not yet. <laughs> well, if you're not interested in genealogy, then DNA can still tell you a lot about yourself. For instance, you can find out whether you are, you know, just a carrier of certain things, or you can find out um, some, uh, what was that? What was, what was one of the things I was thinking of? Well, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one um, of the world's some personal information. Um, it is called, and now I've forgotten what it is. Um, oh, Von Willebrands. So there is a bleeding disorder. It is not hemophilia, which most people think of when they think of a bleeding disorder, but it is called von Willebrand syndrome. And what it is, is basically your blood doesn't clot very well, as opposed to hemophilia where your blood just doesn't, your blood. I was thinking, <laughs> sorry, I was thinking of Shropshire, Shropshire. And so now I'm going to talk about blood and blood. Is that how they really say it? Shropshire. 
Okay. That's that's what John when I said Shropshire, he said yes, yeah, you got it. So mm -hmm. so blood, not blood, blood. <laughs> so when your blood doesn't clot very well, mm -hmm. you have something. It can be caused by this this condition called von Willebrand syndrome. And that is regulated by the um, von Willebrand's gene that is one of the clotting factors, the von Willebrand's clotting factor. It was, guess what, discovered by? Von Willebrand. No, it was discovered by, yes, of course it was discovered by von Willebrand. <laughs> Why would they name it that way? <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading comments, so I wasn't ready. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, um, one of the things growing up is like my my grandpa, he always had these bloody noses all the time. Everywhere he went, doesn't matter, bloody noses. Well, it turns out he had this condition and he passed that on to my mom who also had this condition. Now, my mom had four kids. Well, two of those kids end up inheriting this condition, but two of them did not. Where does that come into to play? What when we're giving blood? So for instance, um, my mom worked at the Red Cross, and so she always encouraged all of us. But once she found out that she had this condition, she couldn't give blood anymore because that's not really good blood. Usually you want your blood to clot. They don't want it to not clot. Um, so you don't want to give somebody bad blood. And so she made sure that all of us were tested. And she thought that I would test positive for this because this is like all sorts of good information for you. When I had my tonsils out when I was like eight years old, um, a couple days later, I got taken back to the emergency room because pretty much the scabs had fallen off and I was just bleeding down my throat and vomiting blood and stuff. Um, Do we really want to hear And so they had this? to chemically cauterize everything in the back there. Um, so anyway, she thought then, oh, I must be one of the bleeders because uh, it doesn't clot. Well, it turns out, no, I wasn't. So um, I don't have this condition. But you can actually find that out because it is it's one of the things that is actually... Um, dictated simply by your genes alone. So if you have this mutation on this gene, then you've got the symptom or the syndrome and you're going to be bleeding all over the place. When you get cut, you're going to be bruising easy, things like that. That's just something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and you probably don't want to give blood if that's the case. And if you don't, then you don't. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find out, you know, little tidbits like that just from your DNA that have Nothing to do, I say nothing to do with genealogy. When you look at it, it does because it got passed down to you. But if you just wanted to know that, then you could just know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some people who were talking about medical results here, and I highlighted them really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there was this one. You can find out whether you have MTHFR. <laughs> I love, I love, this, sorry, just a side note. I love this gene just because... <laughs> It looks, it looks like it's almost like a bad word that you've just taken out oh, of the Oh, mother <laughs> effer. Oh, great. Now we're all going to be thinking Now you're that. all going to see that from now on, and they're going to demonetize <laughs> us because we're talking about the mother effer gene. <laughs> okay. Well, she... All right. No, let's let's talk about what's... what's... <laughs> you can find out yeah, how to metabolize medicines and vitamins. So taking a DNA <laughs> test for that would be helpful. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why you'd go to a genetic genealogy channel, too, if that's all you care about. The mother that's... effer gene? Because <laughs> <laughs> you want to be able to say mother effer on YouTube and know that you're talking about genetic genealogy or genetics in that case. Um, um, so this is another genetic? Okay. El Ellers Danlos, a genetic, ger generic, I think she means genetic disorder of collagen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah, collagen's rather important because that's like that's why your skin is either saggy or not saggy, I guess you could say. You know, it has probably to do with wrinkles and stuff. Um, so if you have some disorder that affects your collagen, maybe you either A, I don't know what disorder disorder does, maybe you either A look more wrinkly before you are, mm -hmm. or B, even when you're like really, really old, your skin is still nice and tight and looks like a young person's. Mm -hmm. Now going back to the um MR <laughs> just say it. <laughs> the mother Effergene. Uh Susan agrees that's how she's yes. seen it. And Louise says she just loves watching you. <laughs> But Catherine's like, uh, I could have lived with that in my brain. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's always funny how we name certain things, you know, and it's it's I don't think they meant it that way. But <laughs> if they did, 
it's like, okay, good. These scientists have a little sense of humor here because there are some different things in, in science as far as naming things that are mm -hmm. scientists naming things out of spite. Like, let's say you've got a, you know, a lump worm or something that you name after your rival who you don't like. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's lots of things like that or, or other things. So. <laughs> I love that you guys have just a great sense of humor like Andy does. Um, other diseases that people are finding out. Sorry, I hit the wrong one. That Marfan one syndrome. Uh -huh. And I don't I don't remember what Marfan syndrome is, but housed on chromosome 15. Um no. <laughs> Patricia, no. <laughs> the mother effort. <laughs> no. Yeah, we can get like, you know, a mom or something, you know, a mom with her kid, and we know that's the mother effort gene that we're talking about. <laughs> Um, oh okay. no, we get a picture of Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> and make that an emoji because, you know, the mother effort goes perfectly with, with Mr. Jackson. No. Uh, so here's some <laughs> other reasons. Some, so some other things people are finding in their DNA, um, a double mutation of... Methylation. Thank you. That's what you're here for. And that's one of the processes that is involved in lots of different things in your body. Mm -hmm. Um. Marfan syndrome mm -hmm. is housed on C15. And then June was talking about this one, a uh, breast cancer. Yeah, BRCA. I, 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 you put BRACA. I, think I, I thought it was just BRCA, mm -hmm. um, which I'm not sure if it was named this, but BRCA, breast cancer. I don't think that's why it was named that way. I think that's just coincidence, but I could be wrong. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the things I have to put up with you, poor Devin. <laughs> so there was another one that people are finding out, Klein-Felter. Oh, yes, Klein-Felter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did have a video on um, trisomy. That's mm -hmm. what that is called. It's trisomy is when you, instead of getting two of one chromosome, <laughs> you mm -hmm. actually get a third copy of that chromosome as well. So in other words, Either your mom or your dad gave you two copies of that chromosome rather than just one copy of that chromosome. Mm -hmm. Kleinfelter syndrome is one of the most well known of that. Yeah. Um, the other is Down syndrome is another one that's well known. Um, that's a trisomy. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna go back here. Um, this one. So I still got their thing up. Oh, I gotta hide that current comment. All right. So, um, Gen Chat DNA. They said, I'm not certain it would be possible, meaning to understand your DNA, how would you know what is what? So um, so we've been talking that with genetic disorders or genetic mutations or those type of things that have impact our health, then doing a DNA test and not worrying about your family tree makes a lot of sense. But again, why would you necessarily go to a genetic genealogy company to find that? Wouldn't you be going to a doctor? Not necessarily, because that's actually the reason that 23andMe started was to create this database for medical research. Um, the genealogy for them was a side thing. Mm -hmm. um, that was not what the purpose of, of what 23andMe started as. Mm -hmm. um, it turns out that, hey, they realized, you know, this is actually pretty popular. So let's include some of this stuff in here. Uh, as well. Um, what did you just do? Isn't there a way to flip that? I have no idea. I was just, I thought there was a way to put that behind you, but you, okay, uh, I'm not. You're the one that does this. So I, I am the one that does You want to just get me out so that way you, when we're talking about the mother effort gene, <laughs> they're not seeing my mouth or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so so that is, you know, why would you go to a genetic genealogy? Well, 23andMe wasn't a genetic genealogy company. They True. were a genetic company. True. Okay. Um, so that's that's why. Okay. And and when it comes to medical stuff, 23andMe gives you the most medical information um, of any of them. Um, you have to go to something like Prometheus to get something even more. <laughs> I was covering your face, apparently. I wasn't trying to. There's a way where I can, uh, there's a way to flip this. I think it's, uh, there's a way where you can flip so this, that this, the yeah, but I can't. Anyway. Well, why don't you, can you move this over here? I don't think so. Oh, okay. It's all good. This mm. is the default. You have to log in with the camera. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So I wanted to share with some comments that were over on the, fam the Family History Fanatics Facebook page. The first one was uh, from June. Doing DNA research without a family tree is like making a sandwich without bread. You need a strong foundation to build on. Well, but, okay. 
June, I understand what you're saying, but I'm gonna I'm gonna object to that <laughs> because um, you have like the the uh, people that are doing the the no carb diets and stuff. <laughs> And no, because we, we went out to dinner with some friends one time and he ordered a hamburger, a double hamburger with no bun, extra lettuce. And so basically you had this hamburger that was wrapped up in lettuce. It was like a lettuce taco burger. Uh, so you can make a sandwich without bread unless unless we go back historically to the Earl of Sandwich <laughs> and basically define a sandwich as stuff between two slices of bread. <laughs> So if we define that as a sandwich, then I agree with you completely. You need that. You need that. Uh -huh. um, but uh, at the same, you know, at the same time, uh, having like a little uh, lettuce tortilla thing is actually pretty good. So, <laughs> and that's and that's and going back to the DNA, that's why. Hey, if you're just trying to learn some genetic stuff about it, that's that's like the uh, lettuce tortilla. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a different kind of sandwich. And, you know, some people may look at you funny when you order the hamburger with no bun and just lettuce. Um, and hopefully they don't have shredded lettuce because that doesn't work very well for wrapping up stuff. But uh, I can see your point. She was thinking of PB&J, by the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't mean to bring the bunless hamburger into it. <laughs> okay. Oh, if you said crack. Oh, well, cracker. Okay. Anna, this is good. No, no, this is good thinking because this is the kind of logic that you have to think of when you're thinking of these genealogy problems. Is a cracker a bread? Now, if we look at what a cracker is made of, you might say that, hey, this is unleavened bread. It doesn't have any rising agent. And so it just ends up being this hard thing. In fact, isn't that what hardtack was back in the 1800s? You know, you'd go on your trip out west and you'd take a bunch of hardtack and and uh, salted beef or whatever. And mm -hmm. that was pretty much crackers. So you could make a sandwich out of crackers. Mm -hmm. It's just not a fluffy bread sandwich. All right. Wrong one. I keep hitting the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So this other viewpoint I liked from Mark Coleman, it says sometimes because it depends on how you define the word understand. Oh. And I think you were hitting on this a bit ago. My ancestry DNA shows percentage that don't seem to line up with what I know of my lineages. But I suspect most DNA profiles are built on modern DNA distribution rather than what DNA origins would have been right for. And it got cut out. How did it get cut off? <laughs> I, I think with um, when you comment on the comments page, I think sometimes you're not allowed to put like big, huge. Oh, 255 characters or less. So. Something like that. Mark, you got to start counting your characters when you're responding. <laughs> so apparently we are, we're a feed channel for DNA, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this one. Is that L-K-E-L-K-E? -E? I, I chose sometimes for my ancestor, my DNA ethnicity matched the regions in Europe where my parents were born. For someone who has been in North America several generations, it might not be that simple. Somewhat, some I manage in Antolia and Caucasus, which was unexpected. Research into DNA match goes to Greece. No, so so go back up. So uh -huh. she's what she's talking about is actually actually something from genetic genealogy that's important to remember at times. And uh, so she mentions she has North American ancestors for several generations. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's actually, I can't remember who did the video, but there's a video on YouTube about when places were finally settled. Um, basically when humans finally got there. Mm -hmm. And around the world, you know, they're going looking around the world and primarily more at islands because a lot of these things haven't actually had humans on them for very long. So mm -hmm. for instance, Hawaii, um, if I remember right, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I think we have some viewers from Hawaii, uh, the Polynesians actually made it to Hawaii about seven, 800 years ago, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. even sooner than that. Um, and so before that, there were no humans on Hawaii. Same thing with New Zealand. New Zealand was only... I want to say a thousand years ago, mm -hmm. um, but at the same, and what's so interesting about this is you have Australia, which was inhabited 40,000 years ago. You know, there was actually a partial land bridge between um, Australia and Asia. And so one of these first migrations, if you follow from Africa around the borders of uh, Asia there, and if you, there's a land bridge, it's, it's actually quite easy to get to Australia. There's not too many big gaps you have to do. Um, but New Zealand, which is 
actually a thousand miles off the coast of Australia. It wasn't inhabited until only like a thousand years ago. And, uh, and so when you, we think about some of these different places of who the native inhabitants are, mm -hmm. it's actually quite amazing who the real native inhabitants are. Um, the, the one that was most um, interesting to me, actually, was in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the name of the river is, but there's a river there that south of that river, it was completely uninhabited until the Boers went there just, what, 300 years ago, 500 years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so these Dutch explorers were the first inhabitants of that part of Africa. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Iceland is only a thousand years. Sorry, I just have to add that in. Iceland's only a thousand years. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all, genetic genealogy, they're all related because it was like, you know, 40 or 50 families from Norway that went to Iceland. And so everybody there is third or fourth or fifth cousins. Maybe sixth cousins is the is the most distant that you are with somebody, but everybody there is related, mm -hmm. uh, which makes dating a little bit awkward sometimes. Um, now, Anne says, why would anybody try to understand their DNA relationships without doing the research connected with it? They're both tools to our family history and work together. And I guess that is my viewpoint. She added a word in there, though. Why would anybody understand their DNA relationships? That's true. So um, your question was just DNA. Understand their DNA. And so recognizing that, hey, this DNA can do a couple of different things. But once you say DNA relationships, yeah, you can understand your DNA relationships without, without doing any kind of genealogy. Mm -hmm. um, however, I like that Jody and a few people made the same comment. And uh, adopted, an adoptee doesn't have option, but DNA is helpful. Oh, yeah. Now, I agree, but one of the things that I've discovered with a, a number of adoptees is they don't know how to do paper trail research. They typically don't get very far with their DNA unless they win the lottery of getting your DNA on to the sites. And there's really super close matches on your site, like a dad that you were looking for. And so I often try to advocate that, that if you're an adoptee, sure, take a test, but make sure that you know how to do the genealogical research, the paper trail research and use your adopted family. They're still your family. Um, and, or if you were a foster kid, you know, just pick somebody and start learning how to do genealogy genealogy research because then when you start seeing possible matches and you have to either paper uh paper trail sock them <laughs> we're not going to really stock them but we're going to we're going to stock them to try to get the information we're wanting when they don't respond to our emails or you know there's something starts not seeming right you can start using that genealogical research in order to get two people at the same time to create you and so yes if you have nothing the DNA is going to help you with your genealogical genetic family tree, but it needs to be based on genealogical research skills for it to all be provable. That was my thought. What would you add? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can go ahead and read that for me. I've been working on my adopted family for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I can see how your DNA is really helping your research. And, and here's, here's I think, a tidbit of information that I'm not sure I'm just making this up um, as I go, going back to 23andMe. So I mentioned that 23andMe started off as basically just a genetics company. They had this goal of creating this database for medical genetic research. Um, and one of the things I noticed after I tested with 23andMe, and this was back in 2013 when there was still, you know, just a few hundred thousand people in their database, is that a how do how to describe this an over oversampling of adopted people had tested mm. in other words people who were adoptees saw this probably one as a way to learn something about their medical history that they didn't know otherwise um and maybe two as hey maybe i might be able to connect with my biological family this way and so for sure, um, for sure. I, and I, maybe going back to the medical they don't really have you when you go to the doctor's office and you fill out a form what's your medical history you really don't know yeah you don't know and maybe taking the dna test helps you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and so and so that's why i say there was an oversized sampling of, of adopted people who contacted me through through 23 andme um I'm, I'm guessing that they just have a much larger percentage of adoptees that are in their database as opposed to the general population. 
Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, Jody says she loves stalking <laughs> people. You know, we we don't really advocate criminal stalking, but there's a lot you can do when you have people who do not respond to your emails if they give you lots of little clues, like something other than their their screen name is one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's not very helpful. <laughs> Um, some other comments that people had shared. I'm going to go backwards. This is a great discussion, you guys. Um, I like what you're sharing. This one, I like using my DNA results to back up my genealogical research. I can't imagine just using DNA results on their own. I agree. I agree. Anything you would add? No. Okay. All right. Read that one for me. I'm struggling finding my grandmother because the area in Canada did not keep official birth records or church records at that time. Yeah. So now you often says, say a DNA test is a record of relationships with all the names blanked out. Mm -hmm. And so in areas where there was someone else had um, another comment similar to that about being in areas where they don't have records or they have record loss, DNA is very helpful. But I, I wonder if, again, you have to merge the research skills with the DNA because you're really trying to find relationships rather than I understand my DNA. Correct. Okay. Um, here, go ahead and tackle that. Um, you're missing something. What am I missing? Because it says it's possible. Oh. I don't know what it's is referring to. Okay. You know, the past comment. So Maria, <laughs> follow that up again and I'll grab your comment <laughs> in again. I'm not sure what that was referring to. Um, I think a lot of people think of family tree as only those people in their immediate circles. They don't care past say grades versus us who go back to sixth grade plus. And I think that's a valid point that could be like, I don't care about my third grade grandfather. I want to know who my dad is, or I just want to know my ethnicity. I could see that. I think that's a valid point. Oh, here's that one that Karen put. Which is why you should watch the video about chess pawns. <laughs> and the Samuel only... Jackson gene. That only talks about um, how popular is gene DNA research. <laughs> well, no, but that's the that's why it's not as popular as people think. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because most people, they just care about their grandparents or maybe their great grandparents, mm -hmm. not everybody else. Yes. All right. Now, here's one that you're going to love. <laughs> Yes, DNA can also tell you how much Neanderthal you have. Exactly. And you might not want to know that. Yeah, she, total cave woman. Total cave woman. I need to just grab her by the hair and drag her around. Well, wouldn't that be me grabbing club. you around? Okay, I'm maybe you're going to do that. Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, here it comes back to your um, health testing. Straight genes is an expect way to learn more than 23 in my heritage health and then, then less complicated than Prometheus. There were several people who are mentioned Prometheus in the chat. Okay, I'll have to look at strategy and I haven't looked at them before. Alrighty. Um, there were some other really great comments. I'm trying to go through them and keep up with all the You know, time. it was great 10 years ago when there was only just a couple of companies that you had to really worry about mm -hmm. as far as genetic genealogy and, and then you know all the companies. And now um, people always throw up another one every now and then. It's like, you know what? I haven't heard of that one. Let me go check them out. Uh -huh. Oh, here's one that you can talk about. Go ahead and read that one. I have a non-paternal event somewhere in my lineage. You keep moving it. No, it's right there. Well, I can't read that small. Oh, okay. Sorry. So maybe genealogy is more important to me along with the DNA evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing. And that's what genetic genealogy, I think, probably was the most surprise to most people. but afterwards and it really should not be a surprise right now is that some father in their tree is really not their father and that, i don't necessarily mean your father it could be your grandfather great grandfather but some father in the tree is really not related to you and in a lot of cases some many fathers in your tree are not related to you depending on how far back you go mm -hmm. all right and then this goes to the non-paternal events um knows nothing about the father usually, but once the DNA is done, then you have to do the research to find the actual father unless the parent-child relationship is in the database. So yeah, it, that's an advocate for both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Sherry Stokes has an, a comment. Your paper trail means nothing if it's not verified by DNA because of all the NPEs and secrets. Yes. And so that that is that is another thing is what we can see is that there's lots of people that maybe have these trees, but once they're doing the DNA, you find out that, hey, there's parts of those trees that are not accurate. And I mean, we found it in our own families as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's not like it's, it is not an abnormal thing. It is actually quite normal uh, to find out that, hey, this branch of your tree, that was a branch of this other tree that, you know, it's not part of your tree. You've got an elm tree and that's an oak tree branch. <laughs> Yep. Um, and so a lot of people in the comments are talking about their NPEs, their surprises. Um, and that's what's really cool is, is for a lot of these people up until 10 years ago, until now, most of these people had no clue about any of these um, branches that they didn't know about. They they uh, just had whatever tree they had and, and assumed that that had to be correct. Oh, um, apparently in Spain, you can't do medical reports. So she had to do Prometheus. Good tip. So we did talk about um, our tests available world, worldwide. And the answer is it depends. <laughs> Always it depends. But North there, Korea, no. <laughs> there are ways to hack around certain things like that. Um, so I'm wondering, how are they discovering this through research? Um, the... the why don't you tackle the medical issues? How are they discovering using your DNA, the different medical findings that they're finding? And then we can also talk about um, relationships. <clears throat> okay. And that's what the, this is referring to. Uh -huh. It came after that discussion. Okay. So um, it's actually a little bit straightforward as far as how are they discovering this through research, especially when you get thousands upon thousands of people that are really with 23 Me several million of the people in their database are essentially part of the research projects. And I say projects because there's lots of them. So for instance, let's say we're looking at, um, I don't know, um, how, how, whether you go to bed early or whether you, you know, wake up early, which you're more prone to. Well, they ask that question and millions of people answer that question. And then they go through and they start looking at all these people's profile to see, okay, is there anything in their DNA profile of the people that said yes to this question that is different from the people that said no? And it's rarely going to be, oh, everybody has this one little marker and all these other people have none of those markers. It's usually, oh, you know what? A lot of these people have one of these three markers or four markers. And only a small minority of these people have one of those three or four markers. And then they take a look and, and start looking at those and see, okay, are they associated with genes that might be related to sleep that we know of? For instance, there are certain chemicals that your body releases at night that basically tell your body, hey, time to go to bed. Um, and so if some of those markers are related to that, well, then they might go and do a more in-depth study where they're you know, either looking at that specifically or actually gathering a new set of sample to test this. So um, that's one of the advantages of having, you know, several million people in a, in a database, because what they might find is they might find, well, you know, actually, if you are of European descent, then it's these three markers here that help determine that. But if you are of African descent, it's actually these other two markers over here that determine that because we're different. We've we've diverged over all those thousands of years. Um, so it, a lot of it is number crunching, lots and lots of number crunching because you've got millions of people that you're looking at, and these tests are tested for you know six hundred thousand things. So you times millions by six hundred thousand, and you get trillions, trillions of different combinations that you have to look at. Mm -hmm. All right, I think you covered that. Let's move on to some other comments that people have had. Um, now this one is from Greg. He's an adoptee and he says, if you're lucky, there will be a close enough match who is also interested in helping you down, narrow down the connection. But if not, there are adoption angels that are willing to help people get started in making connections on WikiTree. There's always a plug for WikiTree in our live streams. Go, you guys go. Oh, T. there's a WikiTree. A WikiTree? Except you got to do the W and I got to do the T. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, there are volunteers for that, and I think other places too. So, yeah, thank you so much, Greg, for that information. Um, this one was a neat comment. I found out from contacting a DNA match that did not know that her dad was my Swedish great grandfather, was her father's father, that he was named after left my, uh, he left my grandmother's Swedish mother. 
So lots of mysteries can be solved um, through DNA research. Um, well, lots, not only that, lots of mysteries that couldn't have been solved otherwise. Mm -hmm. And also, there's also something to, uh, Catherine brings up a, a great point of being patient. She reached out to somebody three years ago who recently has taken a DNA um, test and can help her solve one of her research questions. So, um, yeah, I, DNA can help us figure out who some of our close relatives, rel 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 what's the word I'm trying to say? Relatives. Relatives are. Say it in English, though, like the English would. I don't know how to. Uh, Addo sure, uh, Worcestershire or something to it. Well, I can talk like a Texan talk by my relative. That's the language I can do. Okay. <laughs> I can't drop an English, British, Irish, Scottish accent. No way. <laughs> we need to get Michelle Leonard back on to teach us how to speak real English. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some fighting words. We've got people from all over the UK. Who I've speak already told them that Michelle Leonard is the one that speaks the purest English there is possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, this was a good result from Sherry. Do you want to go ahead and read that one? Um, I had an old guy that blew me off when I said our DNA relationship didn't make sense. Three years later, he did a Y DNA test and came back for clarification because he discovered that my dad was his closest match. <sighs> what should we do with people who blow us off or tell us we're wrong and stuff like that? Yeah, just be patient. Maybe they'll come around like this one did. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's another one for you to read. Uh, my second great grandfather was thought to be adopted. DNA showed he was the bio child of the adopted father. That needs some explaining. <laughs> so, so in this case, you, you had a genealogy mystery of, oh, I don't know who my bio father at is. And then you take the DNA <laughs> test and find out, oh, it is him. <laughs> All right. So I, I love, okay. I'm so glad this ha just happens. All right. So good morning. About a month ago, I asked you to email if you could help me um, trace my father. And for everyone out there, we teach you how to do your DNA research because if we try to do his full-time job, my full-time job as a mom and our part-time jobs as YouTube creators, we would never get anything done. And so I had said, hey, you can check out for search angels. Adoption angels is what uh, Greg had mentioned. You said the search angles. It's like the Anglo-Saxons. You know, I was met, I was thinking about uh, Greg, and Greg likes math, so I went for angle. Sorry. Anyway. Is it an obtuse or isosceles search angle? <laughs> anyway. We would just want the right search angle. That's what we want. In any case, um, you can also check out Legacy Tree Genealogist. And if you put LegacyTreeGenealogist.com and do FH. F, uh, FH Fanatics at the end, they'll give you a little bit of a discount from us. But this is what I like. Sherry Stokes said, I can give you some help. And that's why this community is so great. So, so, so great. So make sure you get um, in touch with them. Suzanne, you're so welcome. I don't know if Betsy Mills from Paris, Texas is still in the live stream, but I saw her earlier in my thick accent. Come on out. I did grow up in Houston with, um, I'm hearing impaired, so that I don't ever hear anything correctly. Um, my parents are from Ohio, and I, Ohio doesn't really have an accent. It's just kind of, there isn't an accent. Although she kept talking about redding up the kitchen, and I'm like, you're not from Texas? Where did you get that phrase from? Anyway, um, and then I've lived in lots of places, so I can throw down my Texas accent whenever I need to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay so <laughs> i don't blowing someone off is a different meaning in the uk mm -hmm. i'm not sure that it's appropriate for a family friendly show but <laughs> just remember that I'll, I'll i'll say this since we're i mean no that's probably not because i think youtube definitely will if i share that story youtube will put a kibosh to it but it has to do with british and american english <laughs> well but even southern has problems because because so my <laughs> karen Quickie also has another meaning in English. Yes, I wasn't going to mention that. That's like <laughs> chess pawns and, you know, other things. But in any case, um, so my brother was a bill. It, my brother was in bill collections and he had to track them, somebody down from Fox, Arkansas. They don't say Fox, Arkansas. Do you they know how to spell that? 
I don't anymore, but um, they say it as the F bomb word. And so he contacted, uh, you know, he tracked the guy down to Walmart and everybody knew him at the wall at the Wally World or the Walmarts. The so Walmarts. The Walmarts. And they they said what the town they were from. So yeah. It, it was very interesting. I'm looking to figure figure out how to now it's time. So we have some time left for anything off topic. I mean, we did kind of go on some tangents, but overall, I, I think the the response is it depends on what you're trying to understand with your DNA. Um, if you're just trying, if you're an adoptee, um, yeah, it's going to be hard to build your DNA, your family tree without DNA research. If you're just trying to do your ethnicity, we're going to tell you don't buy into that hogwash. <laughs> now, some of you are going to say those are fighting words, but you got my Texas accent going. It's going to be really hard to turn off for the next hour. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So you, since you brought up Fox, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a Fox, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same Fox, Arkansas you're talking about. No, no. It was a funny this is, spelling. Because this looks like Fox. It was a funny, spe it, it was a weird spelling. And so when they said it, he just put it on speaker. <laughs> so, because he's starting, he said, I'm sorry, where are you now? And so he's on a, a headset in the, in the, pool of people wearing headsets doing build collecting and he had to put it on speaker so his boss wouldn't say that he's cursing to people anyway yeah <laughs> all right sounds like he needs the mother effort gene he does need the mother Emma. <laughs> oh arkansas accent that bright white light yes see that's the east texas accent and if you're from Longview, Texas, you really don't want to talk to anybody outside of Longview because they'll fall asleep waiting for you to finish your freaking sentence. <laughs> All right. Okay, so is that a question? So I need him to stop typing so I can... Oh, I found it. You did? I think that yes, might be I it. found it. I think that might be it. So anyway, if you have a question now, it's the time to drop those down there in the comment section. And I'm going to try to turn off my Texas accent. Once it starts, it just doesn't turn off. But anyway, you wanted to show off what you found. Yeah. Here is. There. That's and Fox, there. Arkansas. Well, I see an easy mark. I don't see a Walmart. It may not be a Walmart. I don't know. Anyway, we think we might have found it. So if you're if you live anywhere near this, you're gonna have to tell us how to say that place. <laughs> oh, why chromosome music does research from Longview. So don't get anybody on the phone unless you're recording them and then find a player where you can play it at 1.5 speed and maybe even two, or you're gonna fall asleep. So if you thought you were going to have a 30 minute conversation, plan for an hour because they just talk forever in a day. It just it just takes a long time to talk to anybody from East Texas. <laughs> uh, we got some. Oh, Betsy. Betsy. Yeah, she does. I got I'm from East Texas and my parents were from Arkansas. You do have. Oh, yes, you do, Miss Ma'am. So Betsy is has been on some of the chair committees for the uh, Texas State Genealogical Society Conference. And I love talking to my Miss Betsy. She makes me love the Texas accent that I don't get to hear out here in New Mexico. Anyway, so I think this was a question. This one? Or is that just a comment? Which one? That one. This one from Eve. Oh, a comment. That's just a comment. All right. Yes, that yes, Otto, that is Fox for German. You are correct. Uh, so sometimes I can't really tell if some things are just. Oh, there she look at that. She already went and found it for you, for us. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Okay. All right, what Eve, we left? can't we can't talk about that place in Newfoundland. <laughs> YouTube would not take kindly to that. Oh, okay. Okay. What? Story time. Story time. Do you remember this story? Oh yeah, you gotta tell it. 
All right. So, the, so Andy and I were just starting to hit the speaking circuit. And one of the first places we got hired to speak professionally was at the Texas State Genealogical Society. I think this was in Dallas. Anyway. Yeah. I think, and it was actually about the time we were launching our YouTube channel. So we we're doing interviews and all this other stuff. And so um, I came in and I talked to Andy. We're, I don't remember the setting. Well, because we volunteered to help out with like registration and some other mm -hmm. things like that at mm -hmm. different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. So he's sitting at the table. He's ch having a good chit chat with Miss Betsy. And I come in and I sat down next to him and I think I just started rubbing his hair, you know, being a nice little lovely wife. And then what did, what did Betsy do? Well, she didn't say anything, <laughs> but... Uh, she thought something was up because she could see that, hey, you know, both of us are married and they're here at this this conference together and, you know, practically making out, although we weren't making out. No, we're been having. And uh, it wasn't until I'm not sure if it was that day later or if it was like the next day or even the third day that Betsy mm -hmm. finally realized, oh, they're married. <laughs> That's why they're all over each other. Not because she thought we were having a genealogy conference trip because she says stranger things have happened. <laughs> no, our, our she didn't pick up on the fact that both of our last name was Lee's, but even then she wasn't really sure. So that was a fun Because there's usually not like couples that speak at, you know, things. And so it's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to get to your uh, Neanderthal roots and take me away to your there cave. You go. There you go. All right, let's, we got some questions. All okay. right, thank you, Jacqueline. Garner, Garnier. Garnier, because that's the uh, hair thing. It's the keeping of hair. Oh, yeah, coloring your hair. All right. Um, if With all the fruit blossoms and everything. If parents share cousin matches, should I assume that they have a shared ancestor somewhere? Or can it also be that they share cousins through different lines? All right, you can start talking now. I know what I need to get you. No, you don't need to get me. I think we need it. Every live stream needs to have one of these. Oh, okay. Do you want this thing? Yeah, I'll have that thing. So, well. Are you going to be able to get it over there? I just need you to move. Uh, yeah, like, oh, I could go off camera. Don't okay. need to go off camera. <laughs> All right. Where do, hey, you made it disappear. I didn't do anything. So, Jacqueline, yes and yes. And no, and no. Um, so you have, okay, why is this? Oh, you need to give me my thing. Okay, there we go. So we're going to pretend like. I'm going to stop it for just a second. <sighs> I'm going to hide this so you can keep drawing and people can see. Okay. All right, you're you got it now. All right, so we have a match here. This this might be you know cousin matches or something like that. And like you said, it is entirely possible that you can be related through different lines, and that's probably the most likely, um, unless you know otherwise. So I would. I would assume that you're related through different lines until you prove otherwise, just because it's more likely. Now, that doesn't mean that you can say that, oh, I'm definitely through these two lines, so it has to be this. Um, because what it might be is it might be up another generation that it is through two lines. So for instance, let me, this window's too big for what I have. I'm moving there. Don't move. I'm not moving anymore. Okay. And people were chanting whiteboard, whiteboard, whiteboard. So yes, we have to do a whiteboard. <laughs> so it is possible here that instead of being, you know, through the mother and father of this match, it might actually be through the grandmother and grandfather, either on the same side or on different sides, mm -hmm. or through the great grandmother or great grandfathers. So you've got lots and lots of possibilities um, as far as how this could could uh, be. Um, the Whether they are related, that would be something that you should be able to research and find out, you know, if you're seeing that they're related within three or four generations, then that's going to be 
the likely answer whenever you see this. But if you've gone three or four generations and they're definitely not related in those, then it's likely that they're related through different lines. Um, and that's why it's it's showing up that way. You talking? I can't. I've answered the question. <laughs> okay. Who's supposed to keep talking? All right. Here's one I'm looking up right now. Go ahead and read it for me. You got to move that out of the way. I'm moving stuff out, that of out of the way. We got to reach across. Okay. Uh, do you know any resources that will help me find online records for my father's side, which is mostly Ukrainian or Russian? Well, I always go to the Family Search Wiki, but I do it from Google. So let's do Ukraine. I can't spell it. Thankfully, Google helps me. Ukrainian genealogical research. Here we go. I'm going to drop this link in the comments. Uh, this is where I always start, no matter what research I'm doing um, or directing people to, is to go to the Family Search Wiki and try to figure out how do you begin doing research. Notice it says getting started with the research, beginning documents, obtaining civil documents, document retrieval, finding Jewish ancestors in Ukraine. Now, um, I'm not familiar with Ukraine, and I didn't know that that needed uh, to be a topic. So they have a specific page for things related to that area. Um, Catholic vital records of Chus Galicia. Oh, Galicia and Halicina. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, the reason why I'm doing that is um, John Flanagan in his Rangers Apprentice series talked about um, some people from this Galicia. Ga Galicia. Mm -hmm. And then Germans from Russia. And so there's lots of things, research tools that you want to look at, online records that may or may not be a part of it. They've got jurisdictions. And then you can go through, notice they've got both languages on here for you, family search resources. And uh, anytime somebody asks me, hey, where do I go to research in some place? I always go to Google, I type in family search wiki, and then type in the place that I'm trying to research. You can also throw in ethnic groups in a specific location. So maybe you want Jewish ancestors in Bavaria. I don't know if there are Jewish in Bavaria, but you could throw that in there and then famous search. If they have a response to that, can pull it up. That's where I always start. Outside of that, then I'm going to direct you to Legacy uh, Tree Genealogists because they have experts all around the world who um, read the different languages and know how to research there. So, okie dokie. Why do a JEDCOM super kit? I'm guessing you mean a JED match super kit. Um, yes. Jed okay. Match is the website. Jedcom is a file of your family tree that you can upload to Jed Match. But the so question why why should you do a super kit? And uh, just really the reason for that is is then what you do is you actually get more information in one kit, and so it is more likely that your matches are going to be more accurate. Um, hopefully, there's going to be less false matches because of that, and. Uh, yeah, and I think I have a video as far as one with SuperKit and the comparison with your regular kit, how much difference it is. Um, it's really going to be, I mean, you're not going to see a drastic change. Um, what you'll see is you'll see extremely, extremely modest change where, hey, this match on your regular kit is 24 centimorgans, but with your SuperKit, it's only 23 centimorgans because it has that extra information to be able to say, no. It actually cuts off here as opposed to over there. Um, so, and, you know, if you're paying for one month to be able to make that super kit and use the other tools, once you have that super kit, you have it for life. So I wanted to throw in a comment. Why Chromosome Music said Family Search Catalog has been most helpful in Italian research. Absolutely. If you have Chinese research. You definitely want to check out Family Search there as well. Um, this one wasn't directed to us, but I would like to weigh in on it. What's the possibility that a person didn't live in the same area with us just passing through? This is a non-paternal event question. My father didn't live anywhere near my mother. He was a sailor in the U.S. Navy. Yeah, that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a Navy. It could be a traveling salesman. It could be um, the copy machine repair guy. I mean... And um, wars have started over the milkman. They have? Which war started over a milkman? 
well, not wars, wars, but <laughs> there's a it is it's not there was a blog post where oh, people yeah. needed to stop blaming the milkman. So well, it was the milkman sometimes. <laughs> um anyway, so there's lots of passing through possibility. Even a traveling peach, yeah. A traveling preacher, yes. Yeah, they were not always upstanding mm. individuals. <laughs> Humans uh, like to do certain things with other humans. Yes. Some people have more control than others. Yes. All right. So um, what is your opinion on its... The Spanish Gypsy Y-DNA haplogroup H2C1A? Mm -hmm. I have zero opinion on it at all. Um, it's <laughs> a what? haplogroup. That's Just that's Google, the extent Google of it. it. I, I'd have to Google it and look. Mm -hmm. um, do you know... Any... That was the same one we already did. Oh, we did that one? Yeah. That one. Okay. Sorry. Um, I can't find my Merca with MRCA. What's an MRCA? Most recent common ancestor. For my DNA. Not America. 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 <laughs> See, that's not even a Texas accent. Anyway, people like to say that. No. Anyway, um, from my DNA match from maternal great, great grandma it goes to the same family grouping but the location did not match up for conception thoughts um when you say the location didn't match up for conception remember conception happened nine months before and conception only needs to take a few minutes as far as these two people being in the same place at the same time mm -hmm. um most records don't record that kind of detail. So the fact, so, and this is, this is one of the things that, that uh, the fact that you have, that you don't have any evidence that these two people were together at this place or at some place doesn't mean that they weren't. Um, it's, this is, this is more the type of evidence that, Hey, if we can find that these two people were together, then that's evidence that this event could have happened. Mm -hmm. But if we can't find evidence that they were together, because we're talking about something that as far as exact dates are hazy, sometimes the exact weeks, maybe even the exact month, mm -hmm. and the amount of time that they actually have to be together, um, let's think of the traveling salesman. Well, the traveling salesman, if if we just go off of, um, let's let's say that he's he, he likes women. <laughs> And let's say that uh, he's really good at seducing them. And he goes on this long journey, you know, up and down the coast of North America. Um, he could have descendants nine months later from lots of different places. And yet he may have only spent one or two nights in any one place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's probably not going to be any solid records that he was even there. Sure. So. Uh, well, and let's also <clears throat> not blame the milkman. Because it's possible that she went in a visiting yes. as well. Yes. And that is that is the thing is people take vacations. People are visiting others. So it's like it can go either way. Mm -hmm. So they're talking to they, a lot of people are weighing in on, you know, where could people have been conceived versus where they've been born. They don't have to have done all of that in the same place. Yeah, because you got that nine month difference between conception and birth. It's entirely possible that it is in two Vastly different places. Absolutely. What's the best way to determine if a distance match is a full or half relation since they can be both? Um, the best way is to identify who the most recent common ancestor is. If it's a couple, then they're a full. If it is a single person, then it is a half. Um, because once you get down to those distant matches, the amount of DNA that you share with them is so low and the band that they could possibly share is so wide and it overlaps with the half match of that same relationship so much that you're not going to be able to tell just by DNA. You're going to have to tell by identifying a common ancestor, which means identifying some other matches as well. Mm -hmm. So the last question of the day, because we have to go take care of some kids. Um, can you relate non-paternal events to bastardy bond records? You can, depending on what the bastardy bond records show. So, for instance, I'm most familiar with English records. And they were <clears throat> really good, excuse me, <clears throat> of identifying who these fathers were 
because then they would go and get money from the fathers to help pay for the child as far as, as raising up, keeping the child. Now, from a, from a um, legal standpoint with this, the mother just had to identify who the father was. That doesn't necessarily mean that who she identified was the father. So what I think you can get from the bastardy papers is if you do find that, hey, this person was named as the father of this child, well, now you can start to look to see, okay, does that person have other descendants that we match that we can show that, yeah, this is a possibility or this is who that father was. Um, on the other hand, if they don't have any descendants or don't have any descendants who've tested, then it's kind of hard to do that. For instance, um, we're just going to depict a, 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 a gentleman who wasn't really a gentleman um, and no real person, but let's just say that he never actually settled down with a wife and had any recorded kids. All he did was sowed the wild oats. Well, now what we have is the problem of all of these people. We really don't know if it is from this person or from the others. Now, if we were able to, you know, find from the bastard papers, Hey, there's these several women that all claim that this person was their father. And we look at their descendants and there's matches all between them. Well, that's a good hint that they all have the same father, but not necessarily that that is the father. Um, because we don't have any nice documented trail to say, well, we know that this person is the great, great grandson of him and they match these other people. So that is the father. What we, what we know is we know partially the answer to that, but not all of it. So um, Bastry papers are good for NP research just because they give you a named clue that you can do some descendancy research on and start to see whether or not things match up the way they should, if that is the right person. Awesome. Well, before you go, I do want to invite you to make sure that you check out our Family History Fanatics resources page um, on the Family History Fanatics resources page, which I'm dropping a link into the comments section. Um, you can get a number of our free guides, but I also wanted to make sure that you know that there is the Ancestry DNA Table Maker and the Living DNA um, Match Table Maker. Both, both of them are available. You have to use Google Sheets in order to make them work. You can't download them to Excel or Apple's version of a spreadsheet program. You have oh, to I didn't use... know we did one for Living DNA. Yeah. Oh, okay. We released it for Christmas. It's been kind of a soft launch, but I just wanted to make sure that you know it was there. Um, and then I also wanted to call your attention to the fact that on February, the first Friday in February, we're going to have a special guest, Krista Cowden from Ancestry. She's going to go ahead and do a double header on um, Black History Month. So we're looking forward to that. And then so a double header is going to be public um, one hour and then the FHF Extra channel membership the following hour. Speaking of the FHF channel members, um, there is a webinar that goes live tomorrow and that's creating complex simple and complex clue webs. I'll show you the tools to use and then give you some examples and give you some tips on how to create those. And that's about all I have. Thank you can join today if you want. You, you can, always forget that. Uh, yes. I never tell you to join. He reminds you to join. So if you want to watch that, you need to hit the join button beside the subscribe button there on YouTube. And then you'll be able to have access to that plus all of the other uh, videos that we have in the archive. And once we get done with here today, I'm going to come over here to our website and click on members. And then you'll be able to see a link to the latest um, training. I'll put it right here. But if you're ever wondering where are all the trainings that we have, then um, there's some of these links right here, these, these links right here, but then there's also on the um, YouTube, playlist. YouTube playlist on the front page. I was getting stuck on the, the name of that page. It's all about, I'm not sure about all about, but yes, anyway, so that's going to be great. And then next week we have a video on Monday and Wednesday and yeah. 
There we go. That's that's what you have to look forward to. Thanks so much. Hit the like uh, button if you enjoyed this content. If you want to share it out, that'd be great. And go ahead and share it out to all those communities that you're a part of. And whenever you have a new DNA question or any kind of question that you'd like to have us discuss on a Friday show and get everybody's opinion, then go ahead and send that to me at info at familyhistoryfanatics.com. That's all I have. All right. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. Later.